using the full way to air down. That's the onboard air compressor and a waterproof winch cover. Close the valve, check the pressure. I'm tar targeting 20 PSI. All right, we're doing the sickest onboard air solution for a 2019 plus Forester. Uh, I know that this won't work on the Outback. It might work on the Crosstrek, you'll have to let me know. Um, anyway, it mounts up on top of the, uh, the front passenger strut top is where we can fit this compressor and it fits perfectly. This thing is an absolute monster, outperforms everything and you can get it for usually less than $150. Um, we've got the hose, we're gonna make a four-way, so we're gonna be able to simultaneously air up and air down all four tires at the exact same time, which is gonna be pretty sweet. We're gonna do a couple mods to this thing. We're gonna take it apart, we're gonna add a high flow fitting, which increases the performance, and we're gonna add this pressure switch, which is gonna automatically turn it on and off. Super handy. Uh, let's get started with disassembling the compressor. All right, Joe has taken out the six Phillips heads. There's two right there, and there are two more here, and two more right there. And then he's gonna take out the eight hex bolts, because we're gonna have to take the heads off. All right, so what we're gonna do next is unscrew the heads. We've already broken them loose, and you can see how they come apart, just like that. This is the interesting part. This is where all the air comes out from both of the compressor heads come out of this little tiny hole and we're gonna compare it to the high flow fitting and you'll see why we're doing this mod. Not only are we gonna make it automatic with the pressure switch, but the performance is gonna increase significantly. Yeah, big difference. With the original hole on the top right, you wanna drill the new hole on the near left side. Now we need to tap uh, the larger hole for the high flow fitting. Um, the tap comes with the corresponding drill bit, which is 7 sixteenths. Um, he's already started it and he's gonna finish the cut. All right, the next operation is to tap the hole with threads that we just drilled. Um, I've got it held in a vise here. And Joe is doing the uh, half turn forward, quarter turn back to break the chip that forms. Uh, drilled and tapped the uh, new port, which is where the high flow coupler is going to go. He's putting some thread sealant on there. And the smaller hole is where the switch goes. And he's going to spin those in. Uh, the manifold, here it is, it's going to go like this. Um, that's going to come out the side, this new high flow fitting coming out of this plastic hole, which we're gonna enlarge. And then the pressure switch um, intercepts this wire. Basically, I'm gonna cut it. Um, red goes to one side, red goes to the other. Orientation doesn't matter. I'm gonna solder it. You could use a uh, crimped spade connector, but there are a lot of vibrations and you don't want it to come loose. All right, so now the next step is to put the two black heads onto the manifold. Uh, just putting some uh, thread sealant on there. And this is kind of tricky. You want the heads to be snug, but you need the manifold to stop with the right orientation with the switch pointed down on this side and with the high flow coupler pointed uh, towards me horizontally. Nice, that's looking pretty good. Oh wait, did you go too far? Nope. Oh, that's perfect. Nope, that's nice. Perfect. See the switch is pointed down, so that one's good. That head matches up nicely. And then now uh, we just have to hope that the other one matches up here. All 
All right, so now that the two heads are aligned properly, um, Joe just put the orange O-rings back in place and he's gonna make sure that there's a little bit of that uh, oil on there to make sure they have a nice good seal. Then he's gonna put that on the heads and then the eight bolts go in. Seems weird, you gotta do a little wiggling, but it all goes together pretty easily and pretty nicely. So we're almost done. The next step here, um, we need to enlarge this hole a little bit for this fitting. Uh, we're gonna use a step bit and then I need to cut this wire and attach it to the switch. So Joe uh, circularized that and he stopped before cutting through that wall on the right side and it should fit over now. Let's see. If not, you can always go to the next step. Oh my goodness, it's perfect. Uh, now what we're going to do is solder those red wires to the pressure switch. All right, so um, I already cut the wire. Um, and of course, you should pre-tin all your solder joints. And you should use the stuff that has lead because it works way better. So I'm going to throw a little solder on these. And then also the posts. If you're having trouble soldering anything, just turn the heat up. That's always the solution. So that's where those are gonna get connected. We've got some heat shrink tubing. We're gonna throw that on there because we are professionals. Start with the hard to reach one. Fold that a little bit. And get it close, lots of heat. Make sure everything's nice and liquefied. There we go. That's a strong joint. Let that cool. Then we go to the next one. Do a little fold. Nice. And then of course, once they cool, I always like to pull on them really hard because if I want them to come loose, now is the good time. Pull on that nice and hard. Nice. Then we're just gonna slide the heat shrink up onto them and hit it with the heat gun. All right, so it's uh, reassembled. It looks like factory, except now there's a high flow coupler right here. Um, pressure switch is hidden. Still have your normal power switch. Everything looks so nice. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set it up to be mounted horizontally. So we're gonna take off this black plate and these two silver brackets on each side. We're gonna take these and we're gonna move them. So instead of using the bottom two holes, we're gonna use this hole and that one. Now there are these fins that you can see here. So we'll have to do a little grinding on uh, these brackets to make them fit. You could just use a hacksaw and cut out the notches if you had to. So this is what it looks like when it's done. These two silver brackets, instead of being on the bottom, are now on the side, opposite the power switch and the air fitting. And we're gonna take a piece of grill tape and cover up that hole. Just because you can see copper in there, if you look carefully, and that seems like a sensitive component, and uh, cooling is not a problem. All right, so uh, the air compressor is gonna go right up here. Fits beautifully. Uh, you need that height. You need, you need that thickness right there. It doesn't exist on the outback. Might work on the cross track. Fits perfect on the Forester. Um, we were gonna use one pre-existing hole. This one, we're gonna drill and tap it to accept one of those rubber isolators, and that will nicely locate it, um, which makes it very consistent and repeatable for the viewers. <laughs> So now the hole is drilled and now we're going to use the tap to tap threads. All right, now we have the tap in the drill and we're going to tap this hole. So this is what we're installing. Um, we're going to drill and tap three holes for this, but Joe is marking the holes 
marker. The one that he's about to mark on the near left side, um, that surface is slightly angled, like towards the back, like this. So he's gonna mark the hole a little on the front side because this piece is gonna be angled a little bit. And so we wanna count for, um, I guess you could call it drift. So that's the hole that we're gonna do next. Lined up that one. That was the first one that we just did. And then he's gonna mark that one. And then we're gonna do uh, the third one, last. So the next step is to install um, the three easy ones. Um, we put a little rubber cement style glue on there and we're just gonna get it as tight as you can with your fingers. And then once we're done, we'll wipe away the excess. And that little sticky glue will just keep these from uh, untwisting. All right, they're the three rubber isolators um, and we're gonna do a test fit. You can bend them a little bit to help get them to go through the holes. Um, you missed on that. Nice, you got that one. Now, I think you could probably just mount this with three. I, I really think you could. I mean, eventually that rubber is gonna wear out several years from now, your air compressor is gonna come loose and you're gonna have to replace those rubber things. All right, here it is mounted. Uh, Joe says, based on wiggling it, that he thinks that three is enough, um, which is fantastic. That saves a ton of work and custom fabricating that bracket. It is definitely still sturdy. Uh, look in the comments if you wanna know uh, <laughs> if it failed or not after three. I'll definitely make a comment and pin it if three is not enough, but more than likely three is enough. Um, so the, the next thing we're gonna do is the wiring. So it comes with this nice heavy duty cable, which we're gonna run across here, zip tying to these little points here. You can fit a little zip tie through there. And then over here, um, if you're lazy, you can just kind of tuck these over here and then just clamp them on when you want it. But what we're gonna do, because we're fancy, is cut these off um, and hardwire them. Now this would be dangerous, but we're gonna add a fuse about right here coming off the red wire. And it's gonna be resettable too, so it'll be super safe. All right, so here's what it looks like when it's all wired up. Um, we cut off the uh, the ground clamp and we put a ring terminal on it and it gets grounded here. Ground here, I know it's, it's finicky to get that nut to be completely free, um, but if you ground here, um, because there's a sensor, um, sometimes it can interrupt your flow of electricity. So you definitely want to clamp all the high power stuff here, like air compressor winches. Anyway, that's just the negative, nothing fancy there. Positive comes off the positive battery terminal, goes to the resettable fuse. There it is and it's ready to work. If it gets tripped, it'll look like that. Wires run across the top to the air compressor. I'm just gonna throw the air gun in there. We flip the fuse, uh, flip the power on, it pressurizes, and then as we use it, stops whenever it's full. And then when you're done, you should turn the air compressor off, bleed it, pop off, pop off the air gun. Um, uh, there's the winch cover that fits that nicely. I forgot to uh, forgot to tell Joe to buy that. But that's pretty much it for the air compressor. Um, last thing we're gonna do though, and it's super quick and easy, you literally just need a pair of scissors and a screwdriver, um, is build the four-way. I guess you need an adjustable wrench too. But yeah, and that will let him air up and air down all four tires. At the same time, so we got a section of hose. Is it 25 feet, do you remember? Uh, I think it's 25. Yeah, 25 feet. Um, and we got some fittings, uh, some barb fittings. We got a manifold. Yeah, they're the barb fittings. And high flow couplers, because we're keeping all that high flow going. Uh, we got this bad boy, those clip on. This is gonna be so quick and easy and fun. Um, basically, the best place to start is the manifold. And this is gonna go into the top of the air compressor. We're gonna replace the top one with this gauge. So that's gonna go like that. And then here is uh, the ball valve. So this coupler gets replaced. Uh, this is a low flow. You can see how small that hole is compared to one of those. Um, so that's gonna be a nice upgrade. Um, when you're airing down, you just use the ball valve to let air down. You don't even have to take the cover off the air compressor. Then off each of these, um, we're gonna replace these couplers and then just use the barb fittings to connect the hose to each one. Um, and then the last thing that I think we need are the T fittings. So when we get to our front wheel, we're gonna use the T fitting. 
and then continue on to the back. All right, the manifold's almost done. Um, he's gonna add the other end uh, to the side. Um, these are the two factory ends and they have this nice strain relief um, cover on them, which is pretty cool. The hose will get twisted because we haven't cut it yet, but we'll do that once we set the, uh, the manifold down into the high flow fitting. So Joe's cutting the hose now and uh, he cut this imagining that the valve was at the bottom, the very furthest point, he left a little bit of extra. And the next thing you should do is hold the hose here and then imagine that you now have to reach all the way to the back of the back tire. All right, this is what it looks like when it's all done. Um, we've got the manifold up here. Uh, we have the ball valve. Uh, that's used for airing it down. Obviously, when you air down, you don't need to take the cover off the compressor or, um, or, or connect it. But you connect your four lines there, 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 and there. Um, I usually pop my hood and then set the manifold like in one of these holes right here just to hold it. Um, open that thing up. Um, it airs down until you get the pressure that you want on the digital gauge and you close it. And then the hose gets wrapped back up and put into like a garden hose bag. Um, super easy. I keep it on, under the passenger seat. Um, and then when you air back up, take the cover off your air compressor, plug in the manifold. Um, I, I leave the ball valve closed until I've connected all four ends. Uh, open up the ball valve, then turn the compressor on and uh, watch the pressure rise. Occasionally you have to just turn the compressor off for a second, give the gauge about two or three seconds to stabilize and then you can read the pressure. And that is a fast and accurate way to air up all four of your tires.